Hello and welcome to the episode 123 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The first contact with Alan Williams, the continuation of the filming of Help and a slightly goofing recording session are the highlights of today's episode. On the 3rd of May 1960, George Harrison, John Lennon, Paul McCartney and Stu Sutcliffe attended the show at the Liverpool Stadium. The quartet had recently dropped the Quarryman name to become the Beatles, B-E-A-T-A-L-S, in honor of Buddy Holly's crickets. The concert featured Gene Vincent and a host of local bands, but the lads had not been invited to play because they didn't have a drummer. After the concert, Organizers Alan Williams and Larry Parnes got together to plot a series of concerts in Scotland for Parnes's managed acts. Alan Williams was talked by the lads into becoming a de facto manager of the Beatles and to have them acting as the backing of one of Parnes's acts. In 1961, the Beatles, now with Pete Best on drums and without Stu Sutcliffe, performed at the Top Ten Club in Hamburg, West Germany, for their ongoing residency there. 1962, another Hamburg residency for the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best, this time at the Star Club. In 1964, Paul McCartney, Jay Nasher, Ringo Starr and Maureen Cox flew from Lisbon to St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. While on holiday, Paul bought a cheap acoustic guitar on which he wrote Things We Said Today. On the 3rd of May 1965, the Beatles were at the Night and Down to film some sequences on location in Wiltshire for their Help feature film. The footage included the mimed performance of I Need You, shot with real-life British troops. The army used the area for exercises. Two years later, in 1967, the Beatles were at the EMI Studios, overlooking the trumpet over dubs on Magical Mystery Tour. Session players David Mason, Gary Howard, Roy Cupstake and John Wilbraham were paid £30 each, about £550 in 2020 money, half of which, because the session started at 7pm, ran over time as usual ending at 12.15 am. Part of the problem was that instead of having a score prepared, Paul McCartney wanted to hum the part to the players, which, naturally, slowed things down quite a bit. During a tea break, McCartney and producer George Martin tried to work out the exact parts on a piano. Tired of the wait, Howard wrote a score himself, and the recording session could be completed with a further glockenspiel overdub on the coda of the song. And with this, the only other thing to do today is to remind you to please visit www.simonmas.com support to find out ways to support this podcast and my other music-related ventures on the internet. Make the difference and stand by the content you like. No donation is too small, but there are many ways in which you can lend a hand even without spending any money. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.